Hi guys, it's Ken here. This uh, podcast short is with myself, Ajahn Ken. We've got Teacher Ronan, Teacher Ned. And really interesting question from one of my followers on Get English Tips. They were asking about different accents. What's best to learn, the British or the American way? Now, Ronan is Irish, but he lives in Canada. And Ned is from Iran, but he lives in Canada as well. So it was different. It was really interesting to get our different perspectives on pronunciation and accent. Because I know it's a very, very big topic amongst English learners. So I hope you enjoy this podcast uh, short and I hope you learn something from it. And just remember to subscribe to this uh, YouTube channel and get all the latest and best learn English tricks and tips to help you improve. So enjoy. Just before we go into this uh, podcast short, I'd just like to let you know about my new website, gab2.com. It's a platform for English learners to connect and to practice speaking English with other learners. We have audio chat rooms and video chat rooms, and also you can text as well. For members, there are three drop-in conversation classes every week with myself, where you can practice with a native speaker. So check it out, gab2.com, G-A-B-T-O-O.com. And hopefully, I'll see you there. Which is the best American English? What's that? I missed it there. American or British English? And which should we speak? Now, I get this asked all the time. Yeah. And I've never, ever had it. I mean, I've, I've you know, traveled the world. I've taught in Portugal and Spain and South America. And I've n nobody's ever said this to me until I opened my Instagram account. Yeah. And I got taken aback and I just didn't understand why. But this is a very, very common question. Which is the best, American or British English? And which should we speak? What How long is a piece of string? Exactly. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you guys, you guys obviously have got, I mean, I've never been uh, to your part of the world. I've never been to the, to the States or to North America. So I don't really know the, the, the ins and outs of the, the differences, you know, between the two languages. Well, I mean, you guys have experience. What's the what would you say is the big difference? And is it uh, vocabulary? Vocabulary is going to be different. Uh, we say sidewalk in Canada, whereas in Britain, I guess it's a footpath. Pavement. Yeah, pavement. Pavement. Yeah. pavement. yeah, yeah, pavement. Yeah. Postman versus mailman, something like that. So it goes down to the local lingo. You know, I'd say when in Rome, do as the Romans do. And that's something that my family always make fun of me when I go home, because I will have these Canadian isms or American English and stuff. And they're like, don't forget your Irish Ronan and whatnot. So I actually heard that there when you said garage instead of garage. You know? Yeah. Oh man. I got, and then the same happens when I'm over here and I let slip some Irish pronunciation and stuff. And then they've, they make fun of me or something. So I get bullied a lot, you know? Do you think it's, do you think the, the difference in vocabulary is a big problem to know the difference? No, I wouldn't say it's a massive issue. I don't think it would hold you back. Um, mm -hmm. I do not believe that uh, sometimes maybe, um, I'm trying to think of other examples where it would be important to know the local vocabulary any ideas ken or ned sorry yeah yeah but when you when you're doing your g1 when you're doing the drivers um test you know the the, the first part it's important to know the pavement has a different meaning here oh really <laughs> they're actually talking about the road they're not talking about the sidewalk huh. it's not right, yeah yeah and that's something that you have to know because you know the sign might say when the pavement ends that means when the, the road ends Ah, the pavement here actually has that. It, uh -huh. doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean sidewalk like in the UK or in Ireland. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. What about... Um, Whoever's doing their G1 test, they have to know that. Ah. <laughs> well, okay, so there are certain words which are different when you're taking a test. Mm. You know, mm. Tests that are important that you only can have three mistakes in. The fourth one, yeah. you might fail. So... Mm. <laughs> All right, it's the same with anything, I guess, when you, there's, there's exam English and there's conversational English, right? You know? 
two yeah. very different things. Yeah. Yeah. Subway has a different meaning here, you know. So if you, if you ask for the subway, you're actually asking for the tube or the, the underground. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But you know, in England, subway could also mean that underpass. Or, uh, An underpass, yeah. Yeah. You know. I mean, so yeah. so long as the meaning is conveyed, I, I don't think it, it makes any difference whether it's British. Irish, I don't know, American. Yeah, that's, that's exactly it. As long as the meaning is conveyed and you're understood, like if you like going to Ireland and saying highway, oh, I drove on the highway, you know, like people will just smirk at you, but it's not as if we don't know what a highway is, you know, we just call it a motorway or something different. So, yeah, yeah. So it's not really any difference, yeah, British and American English, no? No, it just depends. Some like, freeways are not free. Never there we ever. go. The freeway, yeah, that's another one. And some of them are not so free. You have to pay a toll. Yeah. <laughs> What's the difference between freeway and highway? I don't know. I, I think no it's clue. more like an expressway. Uh, that's what I'm guessing. So it's inside the city, it's inner city. So what is something is inside the city and it connects different areas, different neighborhoods, or parts of the city. That that would be like a freeway or an expressway. Uh -huh. so a highway can be from like one town, one city to another. That's, uh, that's, that's my take on it. But I don't know. That's something you'd have to ask a civil engineer, I think. Because, you know, it gets a little technical there. It's very technical, yeah. You see them on the signs and we use them. <laughs> well, I mean, did you, you say you, Highway 7? You, you, you know, it's it's a, a, actually, no. Highway 7 is inside the city here. But, you know, does it go outside? So, um, yeah, you'd have to ask um, a civil engineer for the difference between these. I mean, well, you, what's the difference between street and avenue, you know? <laughs> yeah. Mm. I think it's one think of the north and south. That's, sorry, it's north, south, east, west. I mean, is that the real difference? Or is it just because we say that that, that is an avenue and that is a street? Mm -hmm. That's civil engineering, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I think that with the, with the expressways and everything, in, in the UK, basically, I, I can drive from the north of Scotland to the south of England in about 10 hours or so, you know? You know, uh, it's very, very small area, you know, where you guys in, in North America, as you say, it's like eight hours flying from yeah. one side to the other. So you, you, you have got different kind of vocabulary for expressway and highway. different. Yeah. Actually, yeah, vehicles. So in terms of vehicles, they're all completely different over here. Um, so like a truck or a van, like a truck. Or what was the other one? I remember now a tractor. So Ned, what is a tractor for you? Oh, a trailer? Tra tractor. 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 Okay, so tractor is what we have. We can have on a farm. Um, yeah, what we can have on a farm. Yeah. And what about you, Ken? A track. Yeah, a tractor's like a, a big wheel kind of farm vehicle. You know, <clears throat> I guess is that right? Yeah. Over here, it's not. What Over here in, in British Columbia, anyways, and this is like what I was talking about with the automotive English or auto body in English. Uh, a tractor is like a JCB, like a digger. No, like JCB. I remember, yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember those. And I remember when uh, my boss said, oh, yeah, I just need you to clean the tractor. And I went out looking for a tractor, and I was like, there's no tractor here. Did someone steal the tractor? I mean, there's a, <laughs> there's a digger over there, but <laughs> he can... Oh, so. like the bobcat, yeah. Yeah, yeah, a bobcat. Yeah. So in the, where I am in Kelowna, like they would refer to a bobcat as a tractor. But for me, a tractor is the vehicle on a farm, you know, like a Massey Ferguson or something. Mm. Right. <laughs> and also we have trailer and caravan, right? So yes. we have trailer parks, we not crap caravan parks. What's the difference yeah. between a trailer and a, and a caravan then? A trailer to me is something that goes at the back of the car and you put maybe your motorbike on it or you... You put your sofa if you're moving house, you know. You put yeah, for transport and stuff. For transport, yeah. Does that mean different to you guys? It's, I think you uh, It's like a house over here. Caravan. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, so like a, a trailer can have both meanings over here. Uh, a trailer is like the trailer park boys. Have you ever seen the trailer park boys, Ned? No. Never. Oh, it's like one of the most Canadian TV shows there is. I don't get half the humor in it. You know, I just don't get it because I'm not Canadian. But um, yeah, a trailer is like a temporary house that you live in, like a motorhome or something mm. like that. Ah, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. That would be what it is. A motorhome that you just plant down in one place and you don't move. So mm -hmm. not very motor-like. <laughs> <laughs> a motorhome without the motor, right? Yes. <laughs> like a home.
Brilliant. So I guess in, the, in those terms, yeah, it would be important to know the local lingo of wherever you are. So, Well, if you don't know, then it's not going to be a big problem, whether no. it's American or, or British English, right? Yeah. No, 90% if, of the time, 99%. Words, yeah. Yeah, if it's like one or two words, you know, in the context, you know, it's, it's, it's understood. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not that, that difficult to understand. So it's not, unless you, unless you get a visa for to go, so, you know, you want your visa for America or whatever, there's not going to be a much difference between the two languages or understanding them, right? And for, I don't even uh, know. In, uh, um, in exams, would they dock you marks like in IELTS or something if you were to use a different, if you no. said footpath instead of sidewalk, I wonder? Never. 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 So it's not a big Good. problem then, yeah? Even then spelling is acceptable, like C O L. O U R, which would be Canadian and British, but mm. uh, C O L O R, which is American, both are acceptable mm. in the IELTS exam. And I always got to check like that. For me, Ronan, um, we have three languages here. We ha- we have the language that we learned in the UK and Ireland that we we are using mixed with the Canadian. Then we have yeah. the Canadian, and then we have the immigrants that have come here and they have their own version of the English language, and we have to adapt ourselves to that and quite you know, try to understand that too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It might be like we might have some Filipino co-workers, you know, some Chinese co-workers, people from different countries, you know, from, uh, I don't know, Cuba or whatever. And we have to try and understand their English as well. I think it's yeah. always kind of evolving anyway at the moment, isn't it? Because the technology, people are texting and, and everything like that at the moment. Isn't it? So the, the language is always kind of evolving. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Excellent. So no problem with British and American. Speak so you hope you, you enjoyed that little podcast short. No and I hope you've learned something from it. It's always great to have different teachers together discussing different aspects of English. Don't forget to check out gab2.com, G-A-B-T-O-O.com for a platform to connect English learners all around the world. And also remember there are three drop-in classes every week for members of Gab2. So hopefully I'll catch you soon. Bye for now.